Mushu? Mushu. Mushu. Oh, come on, Mushu. Where are you? Oh, why am I even trying to use a GPS? That's completely useless. I can just follow the burnt foliage right to him. Who would have known that a steampunk dragon was going to be such a dangerous thing? There should have been a warning of some kind. Oh, hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we were supposed to be building a steampunk dragon, but it uh, kind of escaped on me. A little bit of a habit around the TARDIS lately, doing everything myself, but not to worry, we will still continue on and tell you everything you need to know, including what tools you'll need and what are the tricky bits. The uh, only thing is, we're going to have to do things a little bit differently. How about you guys go back in time and see how this whole thing started while I stay here and try to find this guy before things get worse. Mushu! Mushu! Okay, typically don't have projects just appear in the time machine. Wonder what this could be. Well, whatever it is, it is pretty heavy and, uh, oh, hey, a note. Caution, dragon inside, Moyo store. Whenever I ever listen to a post-it note. Oh, hey everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. And in this episode, we're going to be building a steampunk dragon. And that's right. And it comes to us from our friends over at the Moyo store. And if you haven't checked out their website yet, definitely should. They have all kinds of really awesome projects on there, from steampunk to really awesome clocks and even an anglerfish. But once you find that awesome project and place it inside your cart, upon checkout, use code GROOVE. This will not only save you some money, but also support the channel, which is pretty awesome. All right, Groovers, this little dragon might be our hardest build yet, and I'm pretty excited to get started. Let's get down to the workbench and open this guy up. Mushu, Mushu, I know you're here. My GPS is beeping, blooping. Oh, hey, buddy. Uh, don't worry, it's all good. I, I have some chicken nuggets back at the shop, and everyone wants to see the show. Why don't you? Okay, fine. Chicken trip. I've been a dragon that didn't like chicken nuggets before. Oh, hey, everyone, and welcome back. Yeah, there's a lot of parts here, and those tools are pretty tricky too. But don't worry, everything uh, does come together eventually even though it's a little bit more dangerous than uh, I would recommend. Uh, but speaking of that, what are the hard parts and how does this actually all go together? These are great questions. Why don't we go back in time and answer those while uh, I try to uh, deal with this whole situation? Wontons! Ooh. And just like that, we begin our build of the Steampunk Dragon. If you've never built a hardware model before, these guys are a little bit different than your typical 3D metal model. We have over 2,000 pieces here, including screws, nuts, hinges, gears, tubes, lights, spikes, and springs that make this beast come to life. Like some of the other bigger metal model kits out there, this dragon comes with its own tools for us to put all these parts together. Included in our kit is an adjustable screwdriver, pliers, nut key, mini screwdriver, and mini wrench. This was my first kit I've ever built that came with a mini wrench inside, and it quickly became one of my favorite tools. Why, you might ask? Because you're so cute and tiny. And... Well, this little wrench is great for helping us secure the majority of our nuts with little trouble. For those who don't know, these models are put together by making something I like to call a part kebab. Yeah, no, not the tasty kind. These screws act as our sticks, while the gears, washers, and other parts are the meats and vegetables that lead to the topper, the amazing nut. Securing those nuts involves a delicate, harmonious dance between two tools. The dance can be done in various ways, and with the assemblies we're going to be making, mastering more than one is key. 
The first tool to master is the adjustable screwdriver. This tool is great because we can adjust the reach to get all those loose screws in hard to reach places, while the slightly bigger Phillips head allows us to grab those screws at awkward angles. As I said though before, it takes two tools for us to do this tango, and the second tool can change depending on the nut. For the most part, this mini wrench is the best for securing our parts tightly together, as you've seen for the majority of this build. But from time to time, you might need to use the key or pliers to get the job done. The key can make things a little less awkward than jiggling pliers, but I found the holes can be a little bit too big. If you find the nut is spinning inside the key, try slanting the key slightly down or up to create some friction that will allow you to secure the nut properly. Okay, now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about what we will encounter with this dragon. Let's start off with our parts. As I said earlier, this dragon is made up of over 2,000 pieces, and unfortunately, not all of them are created equal. Multiple times throughout this build, I ran into problems with parts not fitting together. At first, I thought it was just me, and that I had made a mistake. But after inspecting the parts, I found that they were actually defective. This would normally be a problem, but because we're supplied with extra parts and have some Loctite around, we can quickly switch them out and try again. Sometimes though, you're still going to have some problems, which brings me to my next point. The instructions are great, until they're not. Like most Machine Planet models, these kits come with pretty easy to read instructions. Although mine didn't have any physical instructions, they were online, they were still pretty easy to read. For me, I found the best way to follow along is to start with the screw and work your way to the nut. This way, you don't miss any parts and you can align everything to the picture. Aligning the pieces together can be a little bit tricky, especially when working with multiple assemblies. To help get everything in the right spot, I will insert my mini screwdriver into the opposite end of where my screw is going to go. Once I work that screwdriver through all the pieces required, I take the screw and push the screwdriver out. If you do this correctly, you should be able to get the screw in a lot easier than trying to jiggle it around until something happens. Sometimes though, even with all the prep and knowing some secrets, you will run into problems with parts not working. The reason for this? The instructions are wrong. Yep, we have a few errors littered throughout our instructions, which is what makes things a little bit more complicated than they need to be. The first one is step 17 on the upper head. You will need to use the hole below the one indicated in order to be able to get that screw all the way through, and maybe also kind of relocate some of the details. Another one comes when we're building our tail and trying to secure all those little bits. In this case, we can move the details back and forth. And to do that, all we need to do is loosen them and then tighten them up again once everything is kind of in the right place. This is a new model, so some small errors can be expected. A good rule to follow is that if you're having a really hard time getting the assembly together, you need to double check your work. For the most part, my experience with this model is it went together effortlessly, uh, besides the occasional juggle, and there were a few times where I had to push the details together to get everything connected. That being said, one other problem you will run into is the mislabeled screws. B22 being our biggest offender, there were a few times in our legs where I had to substitute another screw that was just a little bit longer to make everything work. Again, not a big deal when you know you have some extra parts, but it can be frustrating to get everything in place just to have to take it all apart to get a slightly longer screw. Finally, let's touch on our LEDs. These little lights are powerful and work by tightening the back to turn them on. I recommend taking the batteries out so they don't drain while we're building. You'll be surprised how much these guys will turn off and on if you don't. On step 201, you will need to feed the tube and optic cable between the gear and nut. The light tubes are held in place by friction, J9 brackets, and the clamp assemblies from earlier that fold down. After feeding the optic cable, spring, and tube through all the assembly, you'll have a little bit extra at the tail. Make sure to measure it twice before cutting, then feed that into our tail lights. Looking pretty good. Let's tighten a few more parts.
All right, Mushu, let's get down to business to do this episode. Did they send me a silly snake when I asked for a steampunk dragon? You've burnt down this entire forest and quite frankly did a bad job, but you can bet before we're through. Listen, Mushu, I can make a steampunk dragon out of you, but I need you to come back to the TARDIS with me. What do you say? Oh, Mushu, I'm glad to see you too, buddy. I'm glad you came around. Uh, let's go back to the time machine and finish up this review. All right now, Mushu, you stay still, no blowing fire, and I'll get you some chicken nuggets. And there we have it, Groovers, our steampunk dragon in all of its glory. This was a huge build. Putting this all together took a lot of time, but my goodness, Groovers, this was completely worth it. Now, there are a few things I want to talk about that I didn't talk about earlier, starting with our whiskers here. When we put them together in the beginning, it can be kind of hard to keep them straight like this. They can get very easily deformed and bent and out of shape in all different kind of ways. This can be fixed easily with a little tool called nylon pliers. And there's many different kinds on the market. The one I like here is has a little bit of a rounded edge. And the reason for that is it allows us to be able to straighten these wires after we've gone through the whole process of building this. And then it also allows us to make circles with it. Now, you can make a really easy vortex by making a big circle first and then going down to the center with this little guy here being in the middle. Once you've created that vortex, you pull this little pin out and you create this really nice effect. It's just something to keep in mind if you're wanting to have a clean look, you definitely want to pick up these pliers here. The second thing I want to talk about is how the legs and the tails go together with just one bolt. Now, inherently, this isn't a problem. It's important to keep a screwdriver and wrench around if you're planning on moving this around a lot, just because it does tend to get loose with those single bolt connections. But that can be pretty much said with any of our hardware models. If you're moving these guys around, you want to have some tools around too, because otherwise they'll just completely fall apart. Now, can I recommend this for new builders out there? Well, yeah, even though this is ranked to be one of the harder builds, because of how these are put together with those part kebabs, well, it kind of goes together easily. I think if you can follow the instructions step by step and you're not in a rush, you'll be able to build this dragon. And if you do get lost on a part that maybe has the wrong instructions, you can always check out our videos where we build this thing step by step and you'll be able to figure out how to get through that difficult piece. Because of that, I think this is a really accessible model. If you want to pick it up, I would say go ahead and get it. You will not regret building this amazing build. All right, Groovers, that brings us to the end of our episode. I had a really good time building the steampunk dragon with you. And if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well as we got all kinds of really cool projects coming on in the future and I would love to have you there. Do you build awesome projects and love seeing them too? Check out our Instagram page where we share all different kinds of projects from around the world daily. And I'll even share yours if you use the hashtag GrooveBuilders. It makes it way easier for us to be able to find you. Until next time, keep building. All right, Mushu, well, let's go get you those chicken nuggets. Have you ever heard of an air fryer? <laughs> Hey, 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 hey.